lucrative thing you can be in the world today is a Nigerian politician, <laughs> particularly one holding high public office. And um, if I had two hours of your time, I would have given you four reasons why. But I have just a few minutes, so I'll give you two. Number one, it's easier to get there. You know how in all these countries abroad, how they take their candidates and they stick them behind the podium and start firing them questions? Um, Mr. Presidential Candidate, sir, can you please tell us how you intend to fund your promise to increase spending for health care over the next four years? Or, uh, Mr. Candidate, sir, can you please tell us uh, what would be your response to China, uh, to the Chinese use of debt as a geostrategic weapon for geostrategic... Eh? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to do all those things. Though. Yeah, all you have to do is to wear a face cap, carry a broom, an umbrella, a chicken, or whatever the symbol of your party is, and just go, power, power, power! Power, power, power! Power, power, power! And if in addition you can add your own version of Shuki, power, power, power! Power, power, power! That's all those people will vote for you. Secondly, in office, you don't have to do much to become a legend. As in, they'll be talking about you 10, 15 years after you've left office. All you have to do is to pave a few roads in the capital city and commission an ultra-modern, AKA, flush toilet in some obscure local government somewhere. Ten years after you leave office, they'll be talking about you. I mean, imagine it. We're sitting in the Hall of Heroes, and the announcer goes, Hey, Nelson, Nelson, I see you at the back. Come up, come up, come up, Nelson. Nelson, tell us, why are you a legend and a global icon? And Nelson will say, because I, Nelson Mandela, I fought against apartheid in my country went to jail for 27 years, and I came out with my mind and my will unbroken. And against all the prophecies of the doomsday sayers that my country would disintegrate, I went on to become the first black president of a multiracial and peaceful South Africa. Yeah, everybody's clapping. Then the announcer goes, hey, I see you, Lee, come, come, don't be shy, come on, Lee, come. Tell us, why are you a legend and a global icon? And Lee will go, because I, Lee Kuan Yu, I single-handedly took the tiny city-state of Singapore and made her an, a global economic force to reckon with. Because I, Lee Kuan Yu, single-handedly took the tiny city-state of Singapore from third world country to first world country in one generation. And the announcer will say, hey, I see you, hmm, honorable, distinguished excellency, sir, from Nigeria. Come, come, tell us, why are you a legend and a global icon? And before excellency, honorable, distinguished sir from Nigeria can even speak, his people will just jump out. Eh, how can you just call him like that? How can you just call him like that? Do you know who this man is, eh? Oshé, eh, this is Chief Agadi Bodo. This is High Chief Obidi Bodo. Eh, eh, Agwan and Bebon, Tata, interpret. Eh, this is not a human being. More, this is a spirit. More, more. And I also go, oh, wait, wait, wait. I think we have a big one. We have a big one. I'm so sorry, sir. Sorry for disrespecting you. Tell us, Chief Agwan and Bebon, Tata. Tell us, why are you a legend and a global icon? An honorable, distinguished excellency sir from Nigeria will go, <laughs> Mr. Nasa, sir, thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I will be brief. I will be brief. But first, let me recognize the dignitaries in this room. Um, Your Excellency, President Nelson Mandela, former president of South Africa, I greet you, sir. Uh, Your Excellency, Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, leader of Singapore, I greet you, sir. Uh, all other protocols duly observed. Uh, but uh, I will be brief. 
Back to your question, Mr. Announcer, sir, why am I a legend? Uh, you have seen it, how my people love me. You have already seen the crowds and the billboards. If I begin to speak, as my Igbo brother say, Chige Jigabo. The sun will rise, the sun will set, I will still be speaking. But I will be brief, I will be brief. Back to your question, sir. Why am I a legend and a global icon? <laughs> I am a legend because I... Chief, doctor, barrister, engineer, MNI, PPPI, CCT, APC, PDP, because I, chief, I am a legend because I paid salaries. <laughs> See, this country provokes the believer in me. And I stand here to accuse us of idolatry. But the deities we worship in vain for protection and healing are not wooden figures hidden in the floorboard or ceiling. Tell me, what do you call a ministry of health that has no hospitals? Or a minister of education that provides no schools? Or His Excellency the Governor that cannot pay salaries? Or a powerful police force that catches no thieves. Tell me, what do you call a ministry of housing that bestows no housing? Or a ministry of works where nothing is working? Or a strong man whose people, though homeless and jobless, still come out each time to vote him in mass? See, this country provokes the believer in me. And I stand here to accuse us of idolatry. But the divinities who promise and fail, yet retain adulation, are not spirits with names too terrible to mention. Tell me, what do you call a people who sing the praises of leaders in a country of blackouts, broken roads, and armed robbers? Or a young man who gives his blood campaigning for a politician who will not even let him know when CBN is employing? When the road to the farm, to the home, grows thinner, but the people in charge grow fresher and fatter. Yet the man oppressed is still first in line to welcome the oppressor when he rolls into town. Tell me, this country provokes the believer in me. And I stand here to accuse us of idolatry. But our heathen gods are not hidden in cupboards. They don't sit in calabashes on lonely crossroads. No, we open their gates. We carry their bags. We swerve to one side so they can pass on the roads. We call them Madame. We call them Oga. We fall to the ground and heal them Baba. We laugh at their jokes. We follow their drama. We quickly forgive them for no light and water. We carry their guns. We transfer their funds. Our idols are human. We know all their names. So to the, so to the kings and queens of broken states, to the strong men of communities without roads or schools. To leaders who glory while a nation is dying. I've come to announce me, I'm tired of kneeling. For a God of thunder that cannot thunder. And a ministry of power that has no power. No matter how you may want me to phrase this, they both belong to the category of the useless. Because them get I, but them know they see. <laughs> Them get ear, but them no they hear. Them get the hand, but them no they walk. See them mouth, oh, na so 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 talk. Man made gods, man made gods, man made gods, man, I will never worship. Never worship. I beg, carry your own bag. Open your own gates. Why can't you fly economy? Why can't you join the queue like me? I will never worship. Never worship. I will never worship. Mm. See, this country provokes the believer in me. 
And I stand here to renounce this idolatry of bowing to empty ogres and madams who do not have eyes or ears to hear us. To fear aqua. From today, I save my worship for those who work hard to ensure our women don't die in childbirth, that the gas in the ground finds its way to turbines that turn to bring power to our people's homes. I save my respect for those leaders who care, that our children go to school and their teachers are there, that our hospitals have drugs and our people have jobs. From today, I save my worship for those leaders who serve. My name is DK Chukumerije, and this is an excerpt from my latest spoken word theater production titled Man Made Gods, and hopefully we'll bring it to Lagos sometime next year. Thank you.